Now, for the non-US watchers to this, when you say the leech, it's not like we're not doing a film like Slugzik coming out. So what, do you, what, what does it mean to be a leech? Well, I think there are many leeches in the world, both uh, around us and in politics specifically. But I think uh, a leech is anyone that uses and abuses and overstays their welcome. And Graham, you play Father David. What was it with, about the, the role when you read it on the page, you thought, this is, I know what I'm going to do with this one. I mean, Father David has maybe the biggest arc of any character I've ever played. You know, so when he sent me the script, it's this incredible arc of this guy that's a totally devout priest um, who is is 100% committed to you know the path of Christ. He stays committed, but things go way off the rails, and by the end, things are very chaotic. So I just loved getting to sink my teeth into a really rich character like that uh, and get to really play around in this amazing sandbox that Eric created. And, and obviously, the priest is a is a staple of, uh, of horror. Who, who were you drawing on for your uh, inspiration, uh, for your priest? So I'll tell you, my biggest inspiration was probably Oliver Reed and the Devils. That to me, you know, I was like, because Father David, he, he's kind of a burly guy, you know, he's a little uncomfortable in his own skin, uh, but he's very convicted in what he believes, uh, almost to the point of, well, not almost, definitely to the point of, uh, of, of his own detriment. And I feel like Oliver Reed and the Devils, I mean, you can't get somebody that is more certain in what they believe than him. Um, but he still has that kind of grimy, sweaty, tactile thing going on. So, yeah. So, for the, the, main, the main antagonists of Father David, you went back to Jeremy Gardner and Taylor Zadkut. She's technically Taylor Gardner now. They got married. Oh, okay. That's easy. Yeah. Movie in this one. yeah. A couple of gardeners. Yeah. What was it about them that made them right for this film? Well, the two of them, I love them dearly, both as people, as actors. I had a great experience working with them. And, you know, they brought so much to sadistic intentions, but for, I don't know, I just like I had unfinished business with them. I had just multiple films in my mind that either the two of them together or them individually fit into. This just felt like another perfect fit. And to sort of bring them into a world with Graham. I mean, I've seen Graham with Jeremy in a couple films before, but they've never really shared screen time like this so that was a, a great pleasure to watch the two of them work and in terms of your shall we say demise is it demise or breakdown sure yeah it's definitely a breakdown I mean he he breaks down <laughs> because then you know you think of like the story of Job and being tested by God you're being tested by housemates what was it about your faith that failed so much do you think well uh, you know that's a good question I think that I think that the test of faith is is his own undermining of his own like moral, you know, morals. Like he's thinking some horrible things. He ends up giving in to his own, in his mind, horrible, sinful uh, desires. Uh, and, and, you know, basically the devil's winning. Uh, so Father David really just then has to double down on his, on his convictions. He's, Cause he's like, if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna make it through life, by God, I better be right, you know? Um, and you've, your film's already screened. Uh... What for you was the favorite was was the favorite reaction of the of the audience to your film? Well, I will have to say that you know, having edited the movie, also the editor in me was very relieved when I at least heard the first couple of jokes land. Certainly, a couple of the ad libs and some of the some of the bigger jokes in the car ride in the beginning. As soon as I heard those work, Graham was in the theater. I was right outside the door. I was like, a bit of sigh of relief. So yeah, I think a lot of the the comedy and the uncomfortable humor within the first ten minutes. Uh, it was wonderful to hear that work. And from the pair of you, uh, you've, got, you've got your own individual memories of Frightfest. Do you want to share a personal favorite memory of Frightfest with Frightfest TV? Oh, yeah. I mean, I, this is my, I believe, sixth time at Frightfest. I love this festival. It's absolutely my favorite festival. Um, probably the year that I was able to host karaoke with Issa Lopez and Joe Lynch. That year was pretty epic. Um, yeah, it's at the Phoenix, every sweaty, you know, the air conditioning wasn't working. Uh, we were all singing just ridiculous songs. Uh, that's one of my favorite pictures ever is uh, us with Paul McAvoy, you know, taking a big, a big selfie with the whole crowd behind. That, that's maybe my favorite. What's, what's a memory for you from coming to Fright Fest? Well, this is my second time here, so certainly my first time was just amazing because I had no idea what to expect. But I will say because technically it happened last night, so it is a memory, my first time at the Duke Mitchell Film Club. Yeah. I had no idea what to expect, and I have not cried from laughter and had a headache from laughter in quite a long time. And what what will you be taking away from the Duke Mitchell experience? 
I know nothing about the internet compared to these guys. <laughs> well, look, thanks for joining us on Fright Fest TV. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers, right?